Welcome back to a, another Scale Modeling Weekly. So this is episode two, uh, as you can see, on the bench. This week I've been working on the Tamiya Italieri SDKFZ 10, which has been going very well. It doesn't make any of the updates this week, but it's a very nice kit. I think it, I think you could probably get it together in a you know day if you pushed hard, but certainly over a weekend. Um, nice, nice, easy build. Good, you know, crisp detail. Uh, quite soft plastic as well, so it goes together quite nicely. So that's been one that's uh, been enjoyable, just ticking on in the background. Obviously, the heat's hit uh, here where, where I live uh, in the south of England, uh, southwest. So it's been a bit tricky for painting, but I got a bit of paint on a few things that we'll see as we go on through. Uh, we've also got a book, a couple of books actually, um, another series of books coming up towards the end of the video. A few updates of what's on the bench. So hope you enjoy this one and you stay tuned to the end and as always thanks for clicking on the video at the first point and i hope you enjoy the rest of the video so it's time for what's on the bench and um first off we've got a uh, tank here so this is the oh it's been a while vulcan models vickers mark six i think it might be the mark four um i can't remember it's been a while and I haven't seen the instructions. Uh, but anyway, I've got this one. This was off on the shelf, filmed up to the point of completion of the build. Uh, sat there for a year, no reason why. Um, but uh, now I've got it off the bench, off the bench, off the shelf, and um, got it painted up. So this is the MRP colours for the early war uh, scheme. Again, I can't remember what it is, so I'm not going to say just in case I make a mistake. It's all in the video, it's all filmed. Um, I did go into it when I when I did them and, and checked it all out, and that's now been matted down. Um, but yeah, fantastic little kit. The Vulcan models didn't seem to survive the release of this one. <laughs> um, uh, not much more to come out of them for you know a good number of years, but at least we got this one, and it does seem to be about reasonably well. They do all the um, versions. Uh, this is obviously the cannon armed one. There's all there's a couple of different armaments. And the build is complex, but for being quite small, it's it's not overwhelming. It comes together quite quickly. There's lots of photo etch, and you get metal springs as well for this working gear, which seems a bit daunting. There's like a metal rod and um, metal spring there. And it is, you know, it's a little bit tricky, but it's okay. I cover it in the video. These are Lincoln length tracks as well. Um, so I'm going to get this one weathered up through this week. I mean, the heat's come now where I live, so it's making things a little bit tricky. At the minute I'm filming this with the window shut to kind of keep the noise down. So uh, it does add problems when you want to paint, but as far as weathering, that shouldn't be a problem here. Um, and I was in two minds, I wanted to see how the decals went down. Um, I think they're okay, you can barely see them. Uh, the carrier film is what I'm talking about. So, and I think I can probably work on that a bit more to hide it. So I was going to bring this one to a scene. And for that, I've got this tank crew here from Gecko Models. And this is, um, we're going to be using these chaps. That doesn't tell us a lot at the back. Uh, but it's these three. Um, I need to check the crew. I think the crew is free. I think it's a commander, a commander, a gunner and a driver. So if that's the case, we'll get these three. And it's going to be a bit of a commander in the top looking down these two trying to work out where on earth they are and the idea is about getting home uh, after the fall of france uh, this being a bef tank it's uh, very early on 1940 and uh, ends up being left in france like all of them nothing really comes back apart from the guys uh, but we'll have a look just quickly at these fantastic uh, bit of packaging here look Almost over the top, I would say. Uh, and there we go. So we've got... They are reasonably good, I would say. What's this? This is the guys with the... Berets. Which isn't what we want. So that's the desert guys. So you've got three desert guys and three ETO guys. So that's the boys with shorts. So here we are. That's these. So there's the heads. And obviously you get alternate heads, you can use the helmet, the um, or the beret. And that seems to be an option on all of the European guys, actually. 
yeah. So that's good. I might probably put the helmets on them instead of the berets. Uh, you know, the heads aren't great. They'd probably benefit from resin heads. But I'm not going to go to that extent. Um, and I think we've got a painting guide, have we? Yeah. So it's quite dark. Um, but uh, I don't think it is meant to be quite... Oh, maybe it is. Yeah, maybe it was black early on. I think it went to all of like the khaki green afterwards. Um, so... I'm painting up some Panzer guys. We'll move on. We'll actually move into that with, with this. So it's going to be very much uh, the same case, I think. But yeah, so it's going to be a very small scene um, because I've been working on bases. As I'm talking about that, and it's to hand. This is my latest development, which I'm reasonably pleased with. Um, I seem to. I've, I feel like I've come a long way here from my last base to this one through um, the help of people in the know and sort of trying to discover a few techniques myself and mixing it all together and um, I think it's come out reasonably well. This has been painted, that's the first thing I've learned, so actually not using the colours of the basing materials you've got, painting it takes you a long way down the, um, down the right track. You can see there where I've missed a bit of the green, you can see where it's like, that's the actual colour of the flock I used. Um, but I'm happy with that, and you, you'll see the difference. This isn't. This is going to be like Russia, but you know, when you you bring a tank on a scene like that, and you can imagine having the the guys around it, it it really lifts it. It's kind of where I want to go, um, and I was reasonably pleased of how easy this was, really, as far as the process. I mean, it it, it wasn't like I had to learn a whole no load of new skills. It was just simply do the right thing in the right manner and you you get to a reasonable level this has got a long way to go to being anything like what you see on youtube and stuff with the the proper guys like who, who, who do diorama stuff but it's it's a massive step closer than where i was before as well so i'm hoping you know 10 bases later we might be somewhere actually pretty decent i think adding height and stuff you can see the sort of contour really helps so i try and build in a bit more height so the idea would be with this one Probably to have something about kind of literally a very small scene, so very, very tight, like that, and maybe that. It's very tight, but like a hedgerow. It wouldn't be quite as bleak as this, because this is meant to be Russian step. Uh, maybe have a sort of hedgerow um, and a sort of lot of vegetation in the bank. June, France, I mean, it's going to be pretty good. Oh, May, sorry. There's going to be plenty of. Um, growth there so I think that would be pretty good so we'll go down that route uh, which is obviously going to drag the video out a little bit longer but all for the good I hope so that's the Vickers uh, which I hope to sort of start bringing together this week the heat is actually a good thing if you're doing bases because it makes things dry off very quickly which can take a bit of time when um, you know as, like when you're in the winter for instance so carrying on with the figures, I've got the base you've just seen is going to have uh, uh, the Panzer 4F. I really need to push on with that now as well. I'm starting to get to the point where I sort of look at it and I think, oh, I don't know where to go. Better not do anything. And I um, don't want to ruin it. And I'm not that guy. I just push on regardless. And, you know, what we get at the end is what we get. So that's got to happen. Um, so I'm going to carry on with that this week. I think I can probably pull it all together, actually. The figures is the main block. And I've managed to... Um, at least get some paint on them. Um, I'm certainly not a figure painter. I've sort of got as good as I've been about two years ago. And of course now I haven't painted a figure since. Um, but what we've done here is just basically blocked in the colours. So we've got, I use Citadel colours. I think I'd get on better with oils, but that's where we are. So what I've done here is blocked in the colours of the sort of shirt, which is kind of like a field grey. I've after spraying it like uh, rubber black, I think it might be, it might be flat black uh, from the Tamiya range. I've then gone and sort of added some highlights with a with a different shade of black, which has just livened up the tunic a little bit. And instead of just painting it all over, I'm sort of like doing brush strokes to kind of pick the highlights. I haven't been filming this, although I might start because this is on the phone now and you can see it's a lot easier to make sure things stay in focus. You know, if I'm... If I'm brush painting like this I can actually look at the thing right or I can even look at the camera 
can sort of paint certain bits. Um, so what I've done is blocked in the face with a couple of flesh colours and then I've just done a flesh wash and now the idea is just to highlight with a lighter colour, so hit the nose, hit the high points on the cheeks, maybe the forehead, and sort of just try and build it up like that. So, uh, I've done that a couple of times, been back and forth. Um, so you might see it a bit better here where this is not had so much back and forth, so that's just the wash, waiting for the highlights. You can see how great the Tamiya figures have come on. This is out-of-the-box figures. Uh, and I haven't painted the tunic, so you can see the difference. The sort of livening up, you can see there's, there's just, it's just little things like that. You know, this is just black, whereas this is, you know, got a bit more interest. And I'd probably add another couple of colours, well, shades of black. So a few more highlights here, and the tunic would be pretty much done. Then we pick out the belt in brown, pick out the medals, try and do the, the pink piping. And you start to get there then. And that's what I've realised with figure paint. It, it looks crap for about 80% of the time. And then the next 10% it looks okay. And then it tends to fall, fall together in the last sort of 5% of what you're doing. Um, especially with faces. You know, it looks crap, crap, crap. Looks awful. Nothing like it. And then you go, oh, that looks like a face. So that's the time to stop. And my experience is just keep sort of doing a bit that's not quite right, cut back with the other colour, do it again, cut back, etc, etc, etc. But I won't go too much, I might just leave it a wash, I might not try to pick out the eyeballs or anything on this. I don't know, we'll see how we go. So that's the figures there, so that's continuing to be worked on, which I'm reasonably pleased with. I don't mind a bit of figure painting, to be honest. So it's a, you know, something a bit different. We've got a few things to try coming down the line. I've got some products being sent to me, some mask sets, hopefully. So when that turns up, we'll have a look at that. I've picked up um, this Mr. Cement Black. So we'll try that on um, the next aircraft model. The idea being you should be able to see your seams. But we'll see how that goes. Yeah, that moves us on to the next bit, speaking of aircraft models. So the Dornier. DO335. So it's moved on a little bit. I've done what I always do is just kind of blocked in colours uh, when I'm using MRP. So I tend to find a colour that works quite well. Um, and in this case, this is XF74, which I don't think I'd ever used. I think it was a bottle I've had for about 15 years. Whatever green it is, it's kind of a nice undercoat for the sort of ROM 80, 81, 82 colours. So I've sprayed that up uh, to check the seams, and I've worked on all the seams here. I was going to do the recessed kind of fasteners around here, but I had a go, and the amount of work it's going to take, I don't think it will look right. It might stand out with the fact that the rest of it, you know, is sort of like this. I'm just going to drill holes, but it's so many, I think I'd rather just go without it. And a lot of models I've seen, people haven't got them there. It was raised. All of this had raised sort of bolts. Um, and that certainly wasn't right. It's a bit like this. I think we can see there. Down there. Um, but anyway, I'm happy with that. So I don't need those fasteners. I think life's too short for that. So I'm going to spray that green over. Because if you don't, you, sort of, you can see this where I've sanded. That will go away. When you put MRP over it. But if you left it like this. No matter how flush you've got, the MRP isn't really, it's got, not got enough body to it to actually fill that in. So you'd see that patch, you'd, you'd have this effect, like what you've got there. So it is worth just, you know, making sure your primer coat's back on. But the first thing that's going to be done is I've sprayed up this. This is XF23, um, the sort of German blue, I guess, that Tamiya do. And then this is what I'm going to put on the ROM65. Just going to go on top of this. Then, when that's all blocked in and nice, that's when I sort of mask it off for the uh, the upper coat. And I'll also mask off here because I find it easier. So I put like tape across, and then just cut that section out with a sharp blade, peel it off. So you've got this mask with that gap, and then I'll spray up the wheel wells. And then my plan is because this is quite heavy, it's it's got a it's got a weight on it on the nose. I'm going to get the gear on on 
It was a bit unconventional, but because it's so big, I think I need it. So it will then sit on the gear and then I can spray it from that. So I'm going to get all the underside painted up. I've done all the doors. Uh, I've done all the ROMO2 on the doors. I've flipped them over now and the gear. So we'll spray the back side of the doors with the blue and then they'll be complete. And then that's when we go back in and do the O2 here. Then I can put the legs in, the nose in, nose wheel uh, in. I've sprayed up the whale wheels as well not easy to say and that will get us to where we want to be the exhaust is the last thing i've got to do the props are done the bombs done so we are rattling on i've even sprayed the canopy with the uh, rom66 and the upper coat is simple it's basically i can't remember it's i don't know if it's 81 80 or 81 82 but either way whatever it is it's a splinter pattern it's so very easy to do no, no problem at all so I hope to get this one painted through this week as well with the heat. This is the sort of thing I'm just going to do next before the sun comes round. Get this ROM 65 on. So that's what we're looking like on there. So for this week's uh, uh, From the Bookshelf, um, we're going to look at, because it's almost a continuation of last week's where we were talking about the Tanks Illustrated books. And this is a set of uh, books from Stephen Zaloga. So they're unrelated, but it's almost the same thing as far as a, a collection of photos. Um, published by Stackpole Books. Uh, and I must say that I didn't know anything about these until I listened to a interview with Stephen Zaloga on the uh, Plastic Posse podcast. So uh, he mentioned these and he also mentioned that this one was selling out quite fast which by the time i'd gone and looked it had so i managed to get these two these are the hardback versions um easy enough on ebay uh, on amazon uh, pretty straightforward but this one was gone and it was like you know up there for sort of like 120 pounds something like that um i noticed the other day that it showed up with a californian seller um and it was at a reasonable price so it came no problem all the way from California. Um, it has got a bit of yellowing around the edge, but I can live with that. That's no problem. Um, so it's second hand, whereas obviously these don't have the yellowing, but it completes the set. Uh, this is now the good news is these two are still available. So uh, yeah, so these are um, this one. This is like part one, part two, these two. And then this is like a, a sort of continuation, just a bit of a side um, glance and uh, this is based on the m4 so this is everything to do with the m4 sherman and the anything that runs on the chassis basically as you can see so it's slightly separate but the good news is um like i said these two are still available from what i can see in hardback and this is being republished in the uk in paperback um so i only went through this because i wanted to you know for a completionist sort of thing so what we're going to look at today is we're, well, I've just brought this one out to show you, but we're just going to look at this one. These two as far as being part one and part two. So we're going to focus on the armored attack and armored victory, which basically runs through from um, deployment ready for D-Day through to Berlin. Well, as close to that as they get. Um, so let's start the first one. So again, this is a, a range of picture books. Uh, sorry, a range of photos really uh, with captions um, and then you've got kind of a, a, an overview of, of what the chapter's about. So obviously the break breakthrough to the CN, CN scene. Um, we've also got Battle for Normandy, um, being rather rough here. Um, and as you can see, you get sort of overview, so that gives you a bit of an explanation. And then we're um, before that, which I find is quite interesting because there's a couple of them reasonably close here. This is this is a sort of overview of the vehicles that take part, which I think is very helpful. Again, you know, it shows you the different variants of the Sherman, um, the Stuart, some on the M3 chassis, the M10. That's a mad one, isn't it? Look at that. Um, and then you've got obviously the M8 armoured car. Uh, we've got a Hellcat there, I think. No, not Hellcat. Um, is it? 
I can't really tell. Oh, the M18. Um, and then we've got the M7 here, obviously, running through. And then the M3 half-track, an M2 half-track. Um, so that's very interesting. And then it goes through what the Germans are sort of coming at them with. So is it Tigers, Tigers, Tigers? No. Almost no Tigers. A handful, but um, as usual, it's mainly Panzer IVs and Stugs and that sort of thing. Um, so, once we get past that, we're into preparing for Overlord. This is what I find quite interesting, because some of this was going on down near me. We've got um, uh, here, this is Woolacombe in Devon. And we've also got some action going on around uh, Slapton Sands. This is all around the south coast. I live in the southwest of UK. And we've also got some deployment around Bristol as well, which again is not too far from me. Uh, here, near Bristol. So um, it is interesting because I think a lot of them went down through the road that's outside um, my window here uh, in, in preparation to sort of load up. So uh, that was interesting to see. And then as you go on through, a lot of stuff that crops up is some of like the bunkers and that and some of the... Um, French vehicles that have been used by the uh, Germans, so some oddities. And you can just see it is just endless, endless photos all the way through. Some German stuff knocked out in action. Uh, FT-17, Fleming thing, um, going on through. Even uh, some of the Yanks in the uh, Pacific camo that they trialled. Didn't go too well for them, from what I remember. Um, Runs on through all the way through into the bulge, I believe. We've still got fighting around, um, this is towards Germany now, and then into the Siegfried line. Obviously, I'm not trying to show you everything. Um, uh, still got massive bunkers, starting to get a bit wet now as well. There's the classic photo of the American Stug, with the two Americans in it. Um, and as you can see, it's just endless. It's just brilliant, brilliant photos. You just, I just, where do you find these two? You know, they're just not out there. That's why it's very important to get these books. Um, and then the beginning of the Battle of Bulge, and this carries over into the next book. It's like the end of it. Uh, fantastic stuff. There's the sort of Ertzatz stuff. Or Ertz, Ertzatz. The, uh, the M10 come Panther and the Stug as well. Nice images of the Stug. You don't always see these. Uh, showing you the folded down armour plate around the back there and the improvised side armour to try and make it just look like something American. No nothing specifically. Didn't work very well. Bit of a mad idea when you think about it. I mean, you know, what on earth were they thinking? A um, couple of King Tigers as well. Some half tracks as well yeah these would be great projects i mean look at that imagine seeing that as a model that would be brilliant you know you get your old tamiya uh, 251 stroke 9 like the one we did on the channel do all your camo and then slap a load of us stuff over it brilliant it just makes it you know seem it just tells a scene you know every photo is just a a, a scene in itself and that's often the case, you know, if you're going to go to the trouble of taking photos, I guess it's already something interesting. So you're already filtered down to getting, you know, reasonably cool kind of scenes and stuff. Easy 8's coming through. Dragon Wagon. One day. One day. Um, and there we go. Starting to come to the end now. And then uh, we've also got a really good index at the back which is useful um it's been very heavily you know well thought out you know if you want the m7 here's all the pages fantastic stuff often that's overlooked because you imagine the amount of work that is um, and then it says obviously running on to the armored victory i will just have a look i've got a feeling this is mainly zaloga's personal collection um but I can't remember if that is what this is. Now, 
No, the, so the photos come primarily from the main collection of World War II US Army Signal Corps, uh, which totals about a quarter of a million prints. This collection was initially housed at the Pentagon through the early 1970s. The vast majority of photos in this book come from this collection. A subsidiary Signal Corps collection resides at US Army. Blah, 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 blah. So obviously it's not his. That would be a ridiculous collection if it was, wouldn't it? <laughs> so there you go. Brilliant stuff. Now if we just roll into the next one, um, let's just see where it starts. Basically overcoming the bulge and winning it. So you're straight in again. You can obviously see the difference of the yellowed paper. You've got to kind of see through it. Um, there we are. Look, there's those odd tracks again. You don't see them all the time. This is the sort of stuff you need if you're going to, you know, you want to sort of delve into specific vehicles from specific points in time during the war. Nice to see some allied stuff as well. This is one of those weird tigers here. I just missed that. That's one of the... Um, uh, Oh, I can't remember what it's called now. The, um... Fairman. Um, link to that. I don't think this specifically has the uh, late road wheels and stuff, but it's one of the early Tigers that's still knocking about in, um... in 45. It's, uh... It's the Hummel um, company. So it's quite interesting. It was one of the schemes in a, in a Fairman kit that I got a while ago. I mean, just endless content. And I'm starting to go into Germany. Um, the Pershing start arriving here around the Rhine. And this is one that I wanted to do. I've got a kit locked and loaded, ready to go. Um, I don't know if it's in here. It's one that had funny tracks. And that's the tracks I happen to have. Funny that I would want to do that one, to use those tracks. But there you can see, this is a classic load of shots as well. This is some video. Uh, this panther getting knocked out, causing havoc. And there is said panther here. That's a famous set. Uh, I've seen that loads of times. Nice to see the duck bill still being used as well. Always makes for an interesting, uh, adds a bit of interest to a, a Sherman, that does. Close up there of the Yag Tiger. You ever want to see how rough the mantle is? Very rough. Um, extremely clean German half track there. Has just come out of the factory and rolled off the side of the road. Still just going on and on and on, more um, Yag Tigers, King Tigers, Pershings, nice to see the Pershings. It's one of those tanks that's sort of easily um, overlooked, but it's a, it's a hell of a machine. Big old uh, American tank, and there we go. Very good. So, as you see, if you want to have some Allied stuff, which, you know, it's very easy to get carried away just with German, German, German. Um, this does break it up a bit. And nice as they're getting into Germany, you've got shots in the factories and stuff they're capturing. And whatnot. Nice shot there of the Pershings there. And then we're into what was, you know, the development, where it was going. So you start getting, you know, some really heavy designs. Look at this thing. Good Lord. Uh, don't start a war with America. Um, these are the tracks I've got, I believe. And there is... Ah, oh, there you are. This is one of the photos I was using um, to show that these tracks were in existence. But it's actually saying um, it's in 1950. <laughs> and I thought it was the Second World War because it's in Germany. Which it is. Well, there we are. So that tells you, you see. You've got to keep an eye out for these things. These are the later tracks that I was talking about. Uh, they were only on some trial vehicles. So that's what I'm still trying to pin down. 
there we are. Hopefully that will have been of some interest to uh, the armor guys out there. And, um, you know, if that's something you want to pick up, I think it's well worth it. They're around sort of 35 quid each. What have we got? $44. $45 nearly. Um, I got mine from America and it was about 35 just Just under, actually, delivered. So there we go. That... Um, finishes off this segment of the video so that brings this week's show to an end uh hopefully there was something of interest for you there i know it's a bit tank heavy but we've still got an aircraft going on and there'll be an aircraft following this very quickly uh, once i've got a little build that i'm doing out the way so thanks for watching uh this is a weekly show so if you want to stay tuned obviously subscribe uh it's great if you can like the video if you like what you see and leave a comment down below I always like reading them um i'll keep you posted in the next video is how we're Moving on, um, this week we've got, uh, I've done the Cromwells, if you remember the two FX Cromwells I was building together, they're finished, so that'll be going up on Thursday, and um, then we'll pick up one of these shows next week. So, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.